What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Slightly Out Topic Podcast. Like always, it is I, Demonic, with the homie Mario. How are you doing, everybody? That's in Spanish today. What? No way. Yeah. Are you? Because are you trying to segue already into the into the topic? I thought you might make that connection. I'm glad I put it out there. <laughs> so you're portraying me to be the racist one because we're <laughs> going to talk about aliens. I don't know. No, I don't say anything. No, I don't put the R word out there. <laughs> I mean, sure, why not? Let's just jump into it. Mario, do you believe in extraterrestrials, aliens? Yes. Not Mexicans, because we know those exist. Those are real, too. Those are real, yes. Very real. I've seen them. Yeah, we, they're out there. We're out there. We're, we're literally everywhere. Apparently, yeah. we're also in Turkey, but we're not going to talk about that yet. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, I believe in uh, that aliens are real. You know, I'm not sure if there's any on Earth. I'm not sure if they've made contact, but I'm not going to say no. We're also not talking about weather balloons, too. No, you know, these, are, so. these aren't, you know, Chinese weather balloons. These are real aliens. Right, exactly. So I also believe in aliens. I believe in extraterrestrials because we, it is, it is a vast universe out there. And to think that, like, out of the quadrillions, millions, billions, light years of, of empty space out there. Yeah. So many planets, so many stars. It is... Dumb of us to think that we're the only life form. Yeah, I mean, it would be pretty arrogant to assume we're the only ones. What is it? I think like 15, 10 to 15, maybe 20 percent of the life in the ocean has been discovered. Yeah. Only that much. That's it. I think what they say, like maybe 30 percent also from the rainforest has been yeah, there's discovered. still a lot left to discover out there, I, right. which I thought, well, we have helicopters now and all this stuff. What is what is what what what's left? But uh, no, it's, it's mainly it's mainly insects and you know smaller creatures, which is still life, you know. But yeah. that's that's the on the rainforest part, you know. That's what well, even in the ocean, there's still going to be stuff down there. Oh no, definitely because we can't just go into the deepest, darkest depths of the ocean because the whole water pressure is crushing you. It crushes everything. Yeah, because what people fail to realize is that when you go down all the way deep in the water, you have all that water above you creating the pressure. Yeah, basically crushing you. It's that's exactly what's going on. You're being you're surrounded by the water and it's compressing you slowly <laughs> or quickly, depending on how fast you sink. Right, exactly. And well, and if you're not buoyant, stuff like that. But yeah, so this is where we're going now with the opening. That on Twitter we saw a video that now you guys have seen. Demonic, play that clip right here. Allah, <sighs> Hocam bu ne ya? Ana oğlum. Bu ne? Hocam. Vallahi içeride bir şey var. Bari ya burada bir şey sıkışmış bak. Taşın içinde bir şey var. Ana ne oluyor hocam? Hocam. 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 So, guys, now you've seen what we saw. It is basically, apparently, this is right here, just in. Video reportedly from Turkey shows what appears to be an alien trapped in a cave. And this is from Chuck Kiesto. Kiesto. No, I don't know, man. It's uh, It doesn't look like what I imagine an alien might be. It's, it looks like the aliens from, like, TV back in the days. You remember the, but that's the 90s? But that's a typical gray. Like the gray man, the gray yeah. alien man. So remember, I don't know if you heard about that one story in, um, I forgot where it's from, but aliens visited this schoolyard and all these school children saw the exact same thing and drew what they saw separately when they were interrogated. <laughs> I wouldn't say interview, but they were interrogated and they drew basically the same, the same thing, the same humanoid, which was a typical gray. So this is looks like a very like typical gray man, a gray alien right here. It sucks that every time you s they record videos like this, it's always very minute yeah. details. You know, like this is this can be edited. Well, it's like that movie Signs. You know, when they show the alien the first time, and all they show is just him walking across the alley. You know, that yeah. was it. That's what exactly. you see here. It's just like it, the quick clip. Yes, there's audio. There's once they just want an alien to like stop. 
pose, give a spin maybe, you know, point at the, you know, wink, finger guns at the camera. Right. But also what they say is that there could be extraterrestrials out there, but they are mimicking us. Oh, right, right, right. You know, so they walk, they walk among us. Yeah. You know, so there, it could be that we just don't see them because they're blending in that right, that well, you know, apparently this alien right here was just rock climbing and then somehow got trapped in. This is the unbelievable, this is the not unbelievable part of this is that look how small that crack is. All right. How did an alien get stuck in there? That's what she says. (laughs) (laughs) Right. But it's, um, they're so advanced. But how did he get stuck in there? How did it get stuck in there? Is it just that's, did, were, that's the, were the easy. other were the other aliens playing like a practical joke on him? And they're like, "Hey, you know, look in here and just push him down." See that that's ET right there. That's the one they left behind. That's the one they're like, you know what? We're just gonna drop him off on this planet. You know, he'll survive a few years here. Damn! Imagine if he's been stuck in there. If it's been stuck in there for thousands of millennia, he's probably just checking back in. Are you guys back yet? And then you have some idiots right here. They're like. World star, but it's not world star anymore. It's more TikTok. Yeah. So this is, I wish there was, like you said earlier, you know, more evidence because this is just the stereotypical Bigfoot walking and you take a very blurry video. Yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, uh, I do think there's aliens. I don't think this video would be a good representation of, of, you know, if I had to make the claim, I wouldn't, I probably, probably wouldn't use this video. There's a lot of there's a lot of other ones like those the ones that the Air Force pilots take. Those are the ones that I lean to more. If I'm gonna show proof of UFOs, those are the ones I'm gonna pick because that's the U.S. government. So for sure, those are UFOs because that just technically means unidentified technically. objects, right? But we know what we mean. We mean right. aliens. That's exactly. alien technology over the border. <laughs> alien technology, right? Way out of our atmosphere. There's also theories out there going that aliens come from the ocean. That they've been oh, right. here for thousands of years, but they just made home under the ocean. Yeah, they're chilling out down there, you know, doing their research, popping up every so often and then going back in. Because there's no way of discovering that. There's, there's physically, as of we right now, there, with our no. technology, no, there's no way of We can get finding. to the moon, we can get to Mars, we can get to Jupiter, or at least send stuff to Jupiter. We can't even send stuff down to the, the ocean that deep. Elon Musk has his priorities wrong. Yeah. Stop going to the moon. We've been there. Yeah. All right. We know Mars. Okay. We've been there too. Matt Damien's been there. Okay. <laughs> There's nothing special about that. We want to go to the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. And invest in that. I will gladly buy a Tesla with somebody else's money to support us going down into the ocean. An expedition to the bottom of the ocean. You've seen Jeff, Jeff Bezos, uh, rocket, right? Yeah. That big ass penis that shot up into the <laughs> into the <laughs> into the space, right? Yeah. I want that penis going underneath the water. Let's penetrate Earth. All let's right, let's penetrate stop Earth. There's the sky. It's Earth is already wet enough. The water. We should go in smoothly. It, literally, it's just that's it. There should be no resistance. Exactly. Very little friction. <laughs> it's not enjoyable for the Earth or the rocket. It the rock the Earth wouldn't feel it. <laughs> exactly. No, for real, I mean, you, you see those videos of, like, those uh, those aircraft doing, like, 90-degree turns, you know, at instant speed, just, you know, doing They come thing. to a stop and, like, stop up. Boom. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, and then they, they like, instantaneously drop, like, 2,000 feet, and it's like, there's no dissension. They just drop. And it's like, what? And there's no propulsion. Once there's again, no heat signature. Once again, I believe that that is the military using their technology right now. I don't know about the military, but here's what I'm thinking. The universe, from what they can tell, is something so many billion years old, right? You're telling me in that many billions of years, we're the only ones, and this is as far as any intelligent life has gotten? Let me get to that in a little bit. Why I mean military is because military advances, military technology is at least 30 to 40 years more advanced than what we have now. What the what the current public knows Military technology is 30 to 40 years in advance. Well, there's a reason that, you know, all that information has to has to stay secret for X amount of years. The Dorito bomber, right? Yeah. The B-52 stealth hawker, whatever, right? I, I can look it up, but I'm not. The the Dorito bomber, the, yeah. stealth, the, the stealth fighter jet, the other one that looks like the, the X-Men one, yeah. right? Those have been, those were released the to the public, I believe, in the 80s or the 90s. But 
those that technology has been kept secret since the Cold War. Right. They know. So they've been since able to the fifties and the sixties, and they barely released the, the that it was that that is what we had. They barely released it in the eighties or nineties. Yeah, because it wouldn't make sense to make that kind of information public right now while it's still in uh, active use. So now imagine the technology that we have now. Almost segue. Wait for it. Wait for it. Not yet. Stop. Stop it. Slow down, y'all. Slow it down. All right. You will get to this story. You, I know you want to know. Wait. So the technology that we have now, right? It's amazing technology, right? It's it's look at the just any the technology in self driving cars right now, right? Right. It's so advanced. I'm just only picking this, but we have drones. Pick literally any technology that we have right now. Now imagine that in 30 years, you can't imagine it, but the military already has that. Yeah. You know, I remember watching on Future Weapons the that they were trying to build that that uh that see through tank or whatever, but basically they're using cameras and projecting an image of what's behind it in front of it. Right. You know? Yeah. Who's to say that isn't already a thing? Yeah, I mean the with the microchips getting smaller and smaller and the ability to I mean you can you can probably cover a tank in just tiny, you know, pixelated uh, you know, I think I saw I think I saw that there is maybe it's a concept, but there is a semi truck that projects the front of of the road on the back of the trailer. So you know how people try to cut oh, off right. semis, right? So, so they, they, so they can, see. can see if there's a car coming or not. Yeah. You know, I don't know if it's actual in actual play yet or not. Maybe there's some laws that need to be passed for whatever reasons, but that is why I said military. I'm also of the belief that yes, we are so many years. How like how old, how old is the Earth? Like they say, like so many billions, like, right? I think thirteen billion years, somewhere around there, right? Obviously, right. we're only two thousand and twenty three years old, right? Yeah, <laughs> but I'm of the big belief that we have. The Earth has had many civilizations before this civilization. Oh, it's uh, the Earth is 4.5 billion years. The, the universe is 13 billion years. Okay, there you go. So 4.5, 4. 4.5 billion years old, right? Yeah. We have had to have had other civilizations already on the Earth before the human race. Oh, man. And that's why I believe... Don't get me started. That's why I believe that aliens live underwater. Because it's probably our, the Earth's past life that made war, nuclear weapons or whatever, and destroyed itself. And the only civilization that was left, it like, found refuge underneath water. Well, let's or, not even say nuclear war. Let's say natural disaster. Yep. What killed the dinosaurs or whatnot. Let's say that's what's down there is. You know what killed dinosaurs? Escalades. <laughs> Greta Thunberg, right? <laughs> no, well, see, that's what I'm saying. It's uh, and you're you're telling me in 4.5 billion years, we're the most advanced civilization the Earth has ever seen. I got bullshit. I would too. So that's why I think that there was civilizations before us. At least, okay, let's put it. Let's put it. Let's take it from the Bible, right? That the Earth, the first cleansing was water, right? The flood, the right? great flood. Yeah. Well, every so, just so that you're aware. There's many civilizations, ancient civilizations, that claim that there was a great flood. Right, exactly. And all around the same time. Right. So let's just say if you guys want to use the Bible as resource, whatever, right? Also, there has been proof that there was floods and great floods, you know, because I believe they found boats like up in those. I forgot what mountains they were, but they found evidence of boats, on in on the mountains. Oh, it's so uh, from how, it's, how high up? Yeah, so I think what you're talking about is that there's this rock formation that kind of uh, that's pretty similar to a boat, and a lot of people thought that would that would be a Noah's Ark because it's like massive. Yes, but I'm talking about that one. I saw that. Or oh, you're talking about an actual boat? Yeah. If I find it, I'll post it. But there's a good chance I'm not gonna find it. But I remember on this science thing, how years ago that they found evidence of a boat, not like a boat like rock thing that looked like Noah's Ark because I've seen that also mm -hmm. but no like they actually found I don't know if it was carried up there or whatever but like remnants of a boat yeah you know so goes to show you that there was waters that high up and they were like we and then Titanic oh. and then like Jack and she could have let Jack on there but she didn't she could have let Jack on there but she <laughs> let Jack off <laughs> uh, no so there's a in Africa there's a formation something called the eye of something right uh 
look it up because it's uh, the eye of the tiger. Dun, 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 dun. Filler music while Mario looks up something. Dun, dun, dun. So the eye of the Sahara. Okay. If you look at that right here, so they're saying that that formation could have only been uh, could only have been made. Uh, you know, one of two different ways that it was man-made and that could be the location of Atlantis because it does, it looks similar to the way it was described by Plato, who, uh, who in his writings described Atlantis. Is it the Plato, the scented Plato or just the regular Plato? Oh, Plato. Oh, Plato. oh, okay, okay. So when you play with the toe, like what toe do you play with? But the big ones, of course. Duh, right? Well, it's in his writings, and that's what he said. But the, uh, the other way, if you look around here, the sand and the way everything is moved around there, it kind of shows that water passed over it. Right. In the middle of the desert. Right. So, in other words, at some point, there had to have been a massive, insane amount of water in this area. And just to have it, you know, go away. Right. So, yeah, it's, it's a pretty neat formation. And it's true. There is a lot of evidence out there, you know, who's to say... If we can do a whole episode about this, but we're not going to because I know you guys love Panera. I know you guys love Amazon. And I know you guys love paying stuff with just, you know, just imagine like this would be the best way of right. Somebody at Panera gives you attitude. So you got to go pay for what you did. Right. And the way how you pay is you just slam your hand. <laughs> on the on the on the cash register or whatever. Kind of take it old school, like when you used to get mad at somebody and hang up the phone real oh, slam that shit. Right, up. exactly. From not the bee, Panera is rolling out Amazon quote pay with your palm unquote technology, just in case you want them storing your biometric data. Apparently, you can now pay with your palm. I remember that there's been. Uh, I don't know if it's still out there or not, but I know a lot of people did it where they get that microchip into their hand and right. it has their, their information, scan it. Yeah, it was you know, like pay. their employee ID and all that stuff. AKA the Mark of the Beast. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but here's the story. How badly do you want that latte and those loyalty points? Question mark. Panera is about to roll out Amazon powered palm scanning technology that will allow customers to pay for their orders and collect loyalty rewards by, yup. Scanning their palms and allowing Amazon to store their biometric data for future purchases and dot, 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 whatever else they want it used for. One of the benefits they're claiming is that giving Panera and Amazon access to your palm print will, quote, allow restaurant staff to greet customers by name and provide a, so this is a quote within a quote, yeah. quote within a quote, highly personalized experience, unquote, unquote. So, you know how Starbucks gets your name wrong all the time? Yeah. So, Panera is now, there is no reason Panera like, is going to get your name wrong. These are people that work at Panera. No disrespect, but they can't be the brightest of the bulbs. I'm just saying, you're, they're going to fuck it up. We lost we lost listeners. Thanks. Oh, I'm sorry, hey, I, I just, I heard the... Tw- I just clicked off. Right. Experts have expressed some skepticism about Amazon's privacy claims, given its track record. Just last week... CNBC reported that Amazon was being sued for not informing Amazon Go customers in New York City that they were being monitored by facial recognition technology. Bro, they were being recognized by their facials. Yep. That's crazy. Amazon's one palm scanning system does offer some conveniences, but it's worth remembering. This isn't just a payment technology. It's an identity recognition technology. Right. So it's like... um. I get it. Uh, I, it. For me personally, I wouldn't do it. It just seems uh, like an invasion of privacy. It, it definitely is. Yeah, they have your fingerprints. They have your. They have your palm. They have your your real only true identity, right here. Right. Right. Unless you're the that terrible, terrible fate of luck where you have the same fingerprints as somebody in New York and you committed a crime here in California <laughs> and that person in you got arrested. Have you seen those news stories? No. There's real news stories out there that somebody committed a crime somewhere else and somebody from some other state got arrested. I'm, uh, I'm not lying. And so they had, the, they just happened to have the same fingerprint? Yeah. I'm going to find a story. I probably didn't find the story. But yeah, I mean, it, but at the same time, it's like any information Amazon wanted on me, they could just get. Yes. If they really wanted it, they could just get it. That's true. Because I, I shop through Amazon. All right. I have Prime. You know, they are. Those they, lights. They, yeah. These lights. Yeah. This. 
They have my credit it's card information. Amazon. They know where I live. Right. Uh, I think my wife has a Amazon card. So it's like, what? they don't need my handprint. They can just get it if they wanted it really at this point. So you know how you swore on the Bible and you put your hand on the Bible? It's, just it's basically <laughs> like, that's how Amazon's going to be like, oh, you want your packet? Dude. That's you how know. you do it now. But, you know, I mean, as far as the benefits uh, are concerned, I mean, what is privacy anymore? I don't. That's true. Do you, do you have Your information, no matter what is out there, We're facial the recognition. Right now. Right now, somebody is literally grabbing our voices. Literally, right now, somebody is grabbing our image, our voices, and putting us at the January 6th insurrection. Yeah, and they can do that. You they, are the 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 sham the what is it the the Q on shaman shaman uh, the Q and on shaman. Yeah, the, <laughs> there you go. You are him right now, bro. They they literally photoshopped you on there. Well, and if you think about it, like we put ourselves on the internet, right? And uh, on a long enough time scale, if they got enough recording and audio on us, then we can just end up, you know, as AI voices, and they can have us say just about anything. Just like the Joe Rogan deepfakes. Yeah, and it's exactly. crazy how good they are yeah and it, it's very convincing they make him sound exactly like how he sounds and how he talks his enunciations the the cadence with which he talks it's it's pretty creepy i seen that was and it's kind of funny because i seen the one that they did with uh it was uh trump and it was obama and biden and they were all playing like call of duty or something and then ben shapiro jumps in <laughs> and i mean that was hilarious <laughs> and that was all ai but it's it sounds just like it's them. funny, but it's scary. Yeah, because there has been people fooled depending on when this came out, either last week or two weeks ago. Remember when Trump was supposed to be arrested? Oh, right. So there was deep fakes of Trump being hauled out. Oh, yeah. There's AI images. Of yeah. Trump and being people hauled. thought that was real. Yeah. There was people that legitimately, legitimately thought that was real. Well, dude, there's a girl, I guess she's some sort of like streamer or whatever. And um, people ended up using her images for to make deep fake uh, X rated content. I seen that story. Yeah, and the poor girl, dude, she was like crying. She only was the upset. story. Yeah, <laughs> only saw the story. Well, no, she she was she looked like really upset and, and like kind of wild. I mean, Cause it it's definitely true. creepy. No, because it's true. Because imagine, especially if you're not really about that lifestyle, I sign up for that. Exactly. If you're not really about that lifestyle, you're. Your privacy has been basically violated, even though it really hasn't. It still has in a way because yeah. that's your face. That's your image being right. did whatever is being done to. You now, know? now uh, I'm on the I'm on the side that, hey, you, you, in, a, in a way you kind of did it to yourself. You know what? By putting your image out there in the first place. Like right now we're on the Internet and anybody can do whatever they want with the content that's out there. There is going to be so many dicks around you. That's what I'm saying. And I can't stop them. <laughs> And I'm just going to be like, you know what? That's the risk I took by putting my face out there. That doesn't mean I'm happy about it. You know, a vagina or two would be nice. You know, just not so many dicks. How many? Equal amount of vagina and dicks. So you want you want equal vagina to dick? That I wouldn't see as offensive. So Because I was going to ask you, what's the appropriate ratio of dicks to vagina 50, that you want? 50. 50, 50. Yeah. All right. Want? No, I want like 100% <laughs> vagina, right? But, you know... It's the, the realities of the world it's is the you're going to get 50 50. I'd be lucky to get a single vagina. <laughs> All right. It's going to be like 10 to 1. So, no, I don't, I would never do this because I value what little privacy I have left. Yeah. And I tend to believe that I'm a very private person. Other than my close friends and family, you guys really don't know shit about me. No. You know, uh, you only know what I put out there and whatever, if I pull it out there, you know, you know about that too, but this is just going too far because for the sake of convenience or for you want to order your drink fast enough, or, you know, just scan your palm and they already know that you get this double mocha latte frappuccino with extra cum on it, you know, <laughs> all that stuff right there. What's just, just tell them the order. Well, okay, let's, they're let's, basically making it to I know they want to make it like a more personalized experience, but like just have the conversation with them, you know. All right. But check this out. It's like I, how I said in the beginning. If Panera, if Amazon wanted something on you, they'd get it right. Yes. There's no stopping them. Yes. If they really, really wanted it, they right. could just go out and get it. So it's kind of like a convenience thing. Let me interrupt you, you real, interrupt you you real quick. Be, it can't be stolen. It can't be copied. It can't be done. It's, it's you. No, but it can be stolen. You. And just go bloop. But it can be stolen. Have you not seen like any of those uh, oh, spy movies? Yeah, you know, like where they just like take your. Bro, they're going to chop your palm off. 
Oh, yeah. They really want that latte. They're going to be like, just like, it's, like you've seen that in a hundred movies. That's what they do. They just cut off the guy's hand. It's like, mm, axes, granted. What's that one movie where they, um, I think it was Men in Black, where they took off his thumb and then put their thumb inside of his thumb and then put it on the the scanner. It was probably Men in Black. I don't, I don't remember what movie it was, but I remember that part. Or you also seen a hundred movies where like they take out the guy's eyeball and put it on the eyeball scanner. Right, exactly. The little left privacy that we have, I value. And this is just too much. I'm not going to do this. I was anti-chip on the on the debit card and credit cards yeah. for the longest time. Like I was like, I don't need that. I don't want it. Just leave me my, my swipe and that's it. Before that, I was really anti-bank. I never put my money in the bank. I was just that Mexican that, you know, had their money in their boot, you know. Well, let me guess, you caved in because of the convenience. No, I caved in because uh, I direct deposits a lot faster than just going to go pick up your check and taking it to the bank. That's the definition of convenience. Yes, but <laughs> so I thought I thought when <laughs> usually when people tell me about that, it used to be like, oh, because you can use your card to you know buy stuff or like order online and all this and all that. Which I never, re- I never really did any of that to begin with. I did find out that when I got my card, I started becoming terrible with money. Yeah, before my card. I held on to basically almost every every dollar made. Well, because you can physically feel it in your hand. You feel that pile getting smaller and smaller. Yep. You know, because it yeah, hurt. That was the same. It way. hurt buying those tacos. I'm like, ah, here's five dollars. Here's six dollars. It hurt. Well, now see, here's what I used to do. I used to keep a pocket full of. So I got, I got hundreds. Pocket full of string. No, so <laughs> I got hundreds, twenties, and then small anything under a twenty. I would keep in a different pocket. So like, if I went and bought tacos, like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna use some twenties, get some change back. Right, and so I tried to use this pocket as, as much as I could before reaching into this pocket, which was my 20s. And that's how I kind of, like, you know, kept kept my you. balance. I get what so, you're saying, right? And, and, but, and you're right, but, now, but uh, yeah, when I was in my early 20s, we decided just to get a bank account because it was like it got to the point where they would, uh, you know, they charge you for money orders, and the bank was like, yeah, you can just, we give you a free checkbook when you sign up. Yeah. And that's how you can pay your rent. You just, you know, write a check. Right. And I was like, oh, that's dope. And then uh, at the same time, they were like, oh, okay, so I have to go downtown to go pay my electric bill, you know, or I could just go over the phone. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm just rather just do it over the phone. And so, yeah, it just turned into a convenience thing where it's like, okay, fine, I give up. Let's go. Let's, let's join a bank. Right, right. Exactly. Once again, the convenience of it, I, I get you there. And so just my money started going, like, downhill from there. But at least it wasn't stolen. Oh, well, right. It, it, but it can be. It can be. It still can be. By the people you wouldn't expect to steal it. But it's still insured. Especially if they're wearing body cams. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> That's true. Segway, Mario, go ahead with Mrs. Officer. And it's not Officer Sexy Face, sadly. So we got uh, E-Bombs World Reports. Cop thought her body cam was off. Records herself stealing nearly $10,000 from resident. Ooh, 10,000. 10 G's, dude. And it's all because they didn't believe in banks. Nope, exactly. It says, uh, we all expect police officers to be upstanding citizens who abide by the same laws they enforce. But this is not always the case. This female cop thought she had turned off her body camera. Then officer stole $10,000 worth of stuff during an eviction search of someone's house. Says uh, the female officer and her co-conspirator can be seen pocketing various items they find while doing a search of the premises. The female officer testified against the male officer, saying she felt coerced to steal. Harris would testify that he didn't see the female officer take anything, that he is innocent, as this is a political conspiracy against him by county leaders and the district attorney to remove him from his position. Ooh, so it goes deeper than yeah, what we goes, expect. Yeah, all right. I so thought notice, this was just a dirty cop. So I don't know if it's, I'm not defending them because what they did is obviously wrong. You know, you need to follow the same laws that us lower people have to go by. You know, but have you noticed that anytime somebody gets caught doing something and they're in a position of power, they're always coerced? Oh, yeah. Into it. Yeah. It's always, oh, I felt like I had to because my supervisor was there or this or that. Yeah. No, it's because you were there. You saw $10,000 and you're like, here's five for you. Here's five for me. You know. Yeah, we're going shopping. So we saw the video, right? Does this person look like she was coerced into, into stealing this stuff? Or was she happy going through 
the personal belongings and be like, oh, here's a watch. Here's this. Here's that. Like, what what do you see when you look at this evidence? What do you see? Somebody that was scared to lose their job or somebody that's literally just having a field day? They're having a field day, man. I mean, the, I mean, she's picking up the sunglasses, looking at them like, hey, these look cute. I'm, I'm not sure why they're there. I'm not sure what they're looking for. Well, but, like I said uh, right here, that it's, think, an, it's, it's, an, it's an eviction search of someone's house. So, well, I don't know what an eviction search is. Like, what do you? What are they looking so, for? So, okay. So, I am not a stranger to the procedures that happen here. Not because I am law enforcement. I mean, I would, I would love to have the ability to pull over somebody because they were an idiot and they didn't want to like stop at that stop sign, and it was your turn to go, but they still went. So, like, I wish I can just impersonate a cop and be like, "Hey, <laughs> no, stop it!" Right? So, I work in. I work in the housing industry, apartment industry, and usually when there is an eviction that happens, the cops, when they come in to serve the eviction, here it's the sheriffs that do it, but when they come in to serve an eviction, basically they knock on the door, they say, okay, you guys need to get out, they escort the people out, then they post the eviction notice on the door or the window, depending wherever it is, then they give us the keys, if not, if they don't have the keys, we change the locks. That's it. Man. This one right here, they were literally searching. Like, yeah, they were. It was they were ransacking this place right here. I've never seen an eviction done like this. See, me neither. That's what I thought was kind of weird. It's like usually they just, they they just go in and they kind of just, you know, coerce the people to leave. Yeah, and usually if the stuff is there, right? Because when an eviction happens, they need to get out. It's yeah. it's done. No matter what, you got to get out. The cops are there. They're gonna take you out one way or another. They're right? not giving you time to pack. Right. Usually, you what you can do is you can go talk to the landlord, the rental place, whatever, whoever it is that that is going through this. You go talk to them and be like, okay, you know, by law they have I think three days a week. I keep on forgetting what it is to take out their belongings. Right. You know, anything. Usually, I could be wrong because it's kind of been a while. But if it's anything valued under seven or five hundred dollars, you can just toss it out. Really? You no, know, because yeah, it's not. Because let's be honest, if you go into a place, an apartment, a house, whatever, and there's stuff that's valued less than five hundred dollars, there's really no reason to keep it or pay storage. Yeah, they're most likely not coming back for it either. Right. Exactly. So that's why, by law, if it's under a certain amount, you can just toss it. If it's over that amount, you have to give them a certain amount of time to come pick up their belongings. I see. Right. So, like I said, second of all, we would never do this. All right. You don't go. When I have to do this process right here in an eviction, what I do is when I, when I change locks, I go in there and I record. As soon as I walk into the door, I start recording everything that's inside the apartment, just in case they say this was here, this and that and that. This like here's proof that. This is what was left in there. No, there wasn't no Gucci wallet or, you know, Prada and all this right here. You it know, it's so, my like 20 karat diamond. Right, exactly. So I basically record everything showing that there's n something of value well, or nothing well, so of value. <laughs> right. Yeah. But the thing, though, is that she recorded it, but she was like recording her taking it. Yeah. You know, so big mistake. This was I've never seen an eviction process done like this. Maybe they kicked them out, but they decided like, okay, you know, they're gone. Let's just ransack the place. This is basically what it looks like. No, I'm sorry, ma'am. It doesn't. You, it doesn't know that you were coerced nah. to do this right here. She was in on it. They were all in on it. Just because. No, you know what? No, it's just because there's a higher up. No, that's yeah. that's a, that's a bullshit excuse right there. You're trying to get out because you were caught. See, that's why I don't. I don't. I don't trust a lot of cops. Just because it's like, it's a job that you apply for. And that you really want to get, and like you try to be, and it's like, just something. Is that something, why I saw you on cops? <laughs> no, <laughs> but just something off-putting to me about people who want that kind of authority over someone else. All right. It's like, do you want this authority because you want to help people, or do you want this authority because you were bullied? <laughs> you know. And, and I, now I, you I hear that a lot. Revenge. So, just real quick, opinions may differ, but me, I am pro cop. I really am. I'm anti Big Brother. You know, I'm anti-police brutality. I'm anti-you stepping over my laws because you think you're above the laws that you're supposed to be protecting and following. Yeah. I'm anti that. I'm pro-cop because we need cops out there. No, you of know? course. It's, yeah, but at the same time for me, it's like, well, 
I trust them as about as far as I can throw them, which is like basically how much I trust just about anyone. I, I am that kind of person that if something were to happen, I would be the one calling the cops. But yeah. once the cops come to question me, that's when I get my lawyer involved. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, you trust, I, I trust you. I trust you. But are you doing this to help me out or because you want that promotion? Yeah, and I'm not gonna say that's all cops. Uh, personally, in my, my in my interactions with police officers, it's mostly been positive. Uh, there's there's just been a few instances where I'm like, you know what, it's it's fine, whatever. You're a cop, do what you gotta do, whatever I gotta say, whatever I gotta do, just let me. Whatever go. I gotta say, make sure the camera's off. You get down on your knees. No, some no, Marvin no, no, Gaye no. starts playing. Some Barry White. At that point, shoot me, <laughs> shoot me good, bro. A speeding ticket. Or five minutes most. All right, which one are you gonna go for? Speeding ticket. Me, me too. <laughs> With that being said, are you going to call the police or not? Maybe you can just be really mad and sue somebody over boneless wings. First of all, what do you think about boneless wings? Are you for or against boneless wings? I'm do you anti. like you're anti? Anti boneless wings. So you love you love the bone. You gotta have the bone. You love putting the bone in your mouth. Everyone loves the bone in their You mouth. love sucking the meat off the bone. I've never met a person who didn't love sucking the bone at all. Me? I, I like boneless. You, what are you, gay? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's... It, it, Damn, I mean, Pride Month is over. Never mind. No, it's... it's The, the so bone what, gives it the flavor, though. You know, like... Uh, yes, that's true. It's because uh, not for nothing, but bone does have a taste to it. And when you cook meat with bone in, it does make a difference. <laughs> but now, I understand... I get your argument. Yes, bone-in wings are better than boneless chicken wings. But look at a boneless chicken wing versus a bone-in chicken wing. You know, what has more meat? What are you paying for? Are you paying mostly for the bone or are you paying for the the meat? I'm paying for the flavor. Right. Because there is a taste difference. Yes, I get you. But the 10... Bone in wings that takes you to fill you up, like you can do that with like seven or eight bones. I'd rather have five bone in wings than ten boneless. You wings. just want all that bone in you, huh? I have to. It's well, one doesn't taste as good. It's, I mean, if I was gonna get bone list, then I might as well just get chicken strips or chicken tenders. Yeah, my kids eat chicken tenders. I eat chicken wings like a man. I eat dino nuggets. I will literally make my children dino nuggets. I make them three or four, three or four, because I have two children, right? Three to four, it depends on which one it is. And I always put in enough to make at least 20. So they can have eight and I keep the 